The Dinosaur Whisperer. How do we get people excited about science? It's a question our next guest finds himself asking frequently. Dustin Groick, or Dinosaur Whisperer, as his some 10,000 Instagram followers know him as, is part of a growing movement of educators turning to social media to engage millennials. But whether he's leading museum tours or he's standing in front of a classroom, Groick's message is clear. Dinosaurs are cool, and everyone stands to gain by getting to know Earth's former inhabitants. So, first of all, how do we get to Dinosaur Whisperer? What, how did that come about? Um, so... Oh, we're probably going to end up talking about Museum Hack. Um, and <laughs> so Museum Hack, and I think we got to start talking about that because that's really where Dinosaur Whisperer came from. So Museum Hack is a group of young, I would admit to saying they're, we are overly enthusiastic, um, New Yorkers who use the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the American Museum of Natural History as kind of our cultural playgrounds okay. um, to lead two-hour, what I like to call two-hour museum adventures. Um, our tours at these two institutions are interactive, they're engaging, they're personally relevant, um, they're informative, and they're a heck of a lot of fun. Okay. Now, one of the things we do on our tours is we ask people to use their phones in a different, uh, a variety of different ways. And when we started doing this, to I use did their not... phones, not to put their phones away, but to use. Their no, phones. absolutely. We tell people at the beginning of our tours, you know, however you act outside of a museum, feel free to be yourself in here. Whether that means you're going to be tweeting stuff, taking selfies, being on Facebook, whatever. We're not here to tell you how to experience this place. We want you to have fun, learn some things, and hopefully give you some inroads to make a large institution more accessible. Um, and so when we started doing this, I was not on Instagram. I didn't know exactly how Instagram functioned or worked, so I had to start an Instagram account if I was going to be asking people to use it on our tours. Um, and I was lucky enough to find the handle Dinosaur Whisperer, and it really spoke to me because the idea of whispering with a dinosaur evokes these ideas of communing with or, or mutual understanding. And that's kind of the tone that I like to take, not only on these tours, but um, in front of classrooms as well. And that if you can take this animal that is often depicted in either a very static, like skeleton in a museum, or kind of a more cinematic, fantastical way that you see on TV or in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, and instead of doing that, kind of put it in a context that people relate to and that they see in their everyday lives. I think it, it adds to a little more of the understanding of these creatures. So um, you, in your Instagram feed, there's actually right. pictures and basically of almost everyday things, but mm -hmm. you're putting a dinosaur in the context and scale of about the size, right? So somebody's like bending over to tie a shoelace and there's like a little dinosaur or there's a huge mm -hmm. one that's kind of standing there behind them as they're walking. I, so I live here in New York City, yeah. and so this is the place that I know and love and that I have take photos of with my phone when I'm walking around. Um, so I started to Photoshop Real, uh, realistically scaled and colored dinosaurs into New York City streetscapes or iconic places, places you generally wouldn't see a dinosaur, obviously. Um, and I think it, again, it gives people kind of a fresh view of these animals that, again, are seen kind of as this, this fantastical creature that, aren't really, that we don't associate with everyday life. Mm -hmm. Okay, and is it working? Do you know that people are responding to you and saying, oh, I never thought about that uh, dinosaur at the Guggenheim? Um, I never thought I would get nearly this many followers on Instagram. So on that metric, it absolutely is working. Um, and I think it works when I'm in front of a group of people, whether it's on a museum act tour or in a classroom. The way that people, I see them start to get excited and asking really interesting questions about dinosaurs, at least gives me, and that's one of the most rewarding things, I think, is that I... I feel like I'm really able to share my love and get people to start asking questions and being excited and not being ashamed of loving dinosaurs. I mean, what is more universally revered than dinosaurs, whether you're <laughs> four or 400 years old? So why is studying dinosaurs so important, if I'm a science teacher or if I'm a student? It's a good question. Um, I think studying everything is important, right? I mean, that's why I love science. It's about asking questions and being curious and trying to figure out why things are the way they are. And at least for me, the most exciting and interesting and important thing we can study is life itself. And if you can get people excited about these crazy living creatures, maybe we start thinking more about why we look the way we do, and why we act the way we do. How do we end up in a studio having this conversation? Why do I walk on two legs? Why do I have opposable thumbs? Okay. It's a grandiose idea, but again, dinosaurs, I think, are a really easy way to get people excited about studying life itself. Okay, if you are indeed the dinosaur whisperer, what are your favorite dinosaurs? Do you have a top five, top I three? I get this question all the time, okay. and that's really tough. It's like trying to pick your favorite child, almost. Yeah. Um, I have, I like... I like Velociraptor a lot, and probably not for the reason most people do. Um, I think it's one of the most misunderstood dinosaurs. So we see it's the, the image. danger field of no respect. <laughs> you could <anyway>. say that. <laughs> so everyone, the first I think image people get is the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park. These really scary, menacing, pretty large, incredibly smart creatures. Okay. And in actuality, Velociraptor, while it may have been really smart, was the size of a large bird and was probably covered in feathers. We know it had a fair amount of feathers, potentially covered, but again, the size of like a large turkey, which is okay. definitely different than the dinosaurs right. we saw in right. Jurassic Park. So because of that, I think that misunderstanding is a great way to start talking about 
the reality of life versus the clues that we have in the, the fossil record and really trying to piece together what these amazing animals look like. All right, Dustin Groek, the Dinosaur Whisperer. Thanks so much for stopping. Of course. Climates were changing, sea levels were rising. There was a fair amount of volcanic activity all over the world where tendons attached to feathers that then attach to that bone. And when you have a really...